whether you need to work more on your mindset or you need ideas for books around your creativity. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to EGO Initiative, where we create self-care systems to help us live our best lives and support our communities without sacrificing our health. If this is your first time on my channel or you missed last week's video, in today's wellness Wednesday chat, I'm going to be sharing a few more books that I recommend on overall wellness, mindset, creativity, and planning. So if you missed last week's video, go ahead and check it out. But for today, I'm going to get into the rest of those books and get into more of the creativity and the planning books after a few more mindset books. The next one is The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. It's another book that really helps you uh, overcome limiting beliefs and self-sabotage. It helps you get clear on what your what he calls your zone of genius is and how to operate within your zone of genius. So that's another great mindset book if you are someone who experiences imposter syndrome very regularly or you have some anxiousness around the things that you want to do or really enjoy doing but are uh, afraid to monetize some of the things that you are doing or going to business for yourself, things that are nature. This would be a great book for you. And then the last two that I want to share with you from Audible, Money Mindset Books. Both of them I'm currently listening to right now and one I would definitely recommend that you get the physical copy of is Get Good With Money by Tiffany Aliche. She's also known as the Budget Nista on Instagram and just in general. That is, I think that's what her brand is called, but Get Good With Money, it's exactly what it sounds like. It helps you get good with money and really create financial, I think she, the term she uses is financial wholeness. Because a lot of people, you hear about financial freedom, but she talks about financial wholeness and what that looks like. And she shares her story of her financial journey essentially. And then she gives you some tips on how to get to your financial wholeness journey. And like I said, I'm currently reading it. So that I, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. And then the next one is Money A Love Story by Kate Northrup. She talks about how to get to financial freedom, but in a way that isn't like limiting. You know, a lot of people misquote the scripture about money and she's not coming from a biblical sense or anything. She really helps you get clear on what your relationship to money is and it doesn't have to be this rigid thing because money is just energy like it's not an actual yes is a physical thing that we exchange but it's really just an exchange of value and so if you get really good at thinking about ways in which you want to provide values in exchange for money as a value and currency and also getting clear on the fact that Money doesn't buy you happiness, but it can definitely get you to a space where you are not constantly frustrated. It can definitely help you support more of the people that you want to support. I don't want to quote the scripture because my head's not covered. Money helps you do a lot of things in this world, so to speak. So if you shy away from money or you think that like money is like this evil thing, then yeah, you're never going to have enough money to do the things that you need to do. And so I think she really helps you switch your mindset and your relationship to money, I should say. So that's a great book for that as well. Another Audible book that I think I probably need to get a physical copy of is Building a Story Brand. If you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, or just someone who has a personal brand, this is definitely a book that you want to get a physical copy of and really, really study because it helps you get clear on how to tell a story. Because as people buy into stories, people buy into how to build like no trust with your brand, this is a great resource and book for you to get into the idea of storytelling. All right, so let's get into the storytelling and the creativity and journaling type of one of the main books that really supported me with getting serious about my writing here is Love My Language by Alexandra L aka Alex L. I actually don't have the other book here but Words from a Wanderer is the first book that I got from her and just hearing her story the way that she came to writing that book really inspired me to continue with even though I wasn't performing at the time but to continue my journaling practice and I was able to go back to some of my journal and create poetry out of those things and so her book Words from a Wanderer which is what I meant to pick up but this is another book of hers that I I have read it's really just like journal prompts that she's written before affirmations that she has written to herself and so I really liked this because it was my reintroduction to an art form that I really loved and it was the first time I've seen it done in this way 
and it gave me permission to get back to my writing even though I wasn't performing as much and I wasn't getting paid to perform for that matter. So this was a really great book for me to get back to it. The next one is For Color Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough. I can never say the full thing so I just say For Colored Girls by Ntozake Shange. I watched the movie first that's how i got introduced to the book actually this was gifted to me an old acquaintance fatuary if you were ever watching this hey girl i watched the movie in 2010 i think tyler perry was the one that did a, the movie version of it and it broke my heart and really is kind of the underpinning to what i do now and who i do it for and i actually have a poem that is kind of the thesis again of what i do and who i do it for it's also titled for color girls and this was the the play it's actually a choreo poem that inspired me to be intentional about my writing think about who i was writing for why i was writing what my message was going to be and so this is one of those books for that and the final one in the storytelling is becoming by michelle obama i loved this book because i love hearing people's backstory and it kind of gives me an insight into why they are the way they are this is one of those books where i ate the meat and spat out the bones that is all i'm going to say about that but i really love the concept of becoming and how we're always constantly growing and so i like the term becoming in terms of like you know unlearning and learning new things about who you are and how you want to show up in the world this book does a really great job with that and also going to segue into the journaling section because i got gifted the journal that comes along with her book and the subtitle is a guided journal for discovering your voice and this really helps with storytelling and that's another reason why i like reading people's backstories in terms of like quote unquote famous people and celebrity peoples and people of influence. I like reading their backstory because you kind of see a parallel with the way that they use their platform and understanding like their voice and, and their message and it really helps you get more clear on what it is about their voice that resonates with you and I like to study those things because I am a poet and a storyteller by nature and so this journal also helps you get clear on your voice and the message that you are trying to share. I actually haven't gotten into this um, journal that much. I just have all the priorities in terms of my journaling. My first introduction to guided journaling was from Alex L. I bought her first box set of guided journals. I think this was her very first one. It's called A Note to Self. There's volume one and two. I don't think I ever made it to volume two to be honest. The next one is today I affirm this is a great one in terms of affirmations and writing daily this is also another one that I didn't really get through that much so what I discovered about myself is that I don't think that guided guided journals are necessary for me at this point in my journaling um, journey I should say because I'm pretty good with self-reflection at this point in my life whereas when I first started out I really needed a guide so if you're someone who is not big on journaling you sit down and you're like what am I supposed to write then guided journals are definitely for you but I think I've graduated from guided journals so some of them I haven't filled out because I just kind of have my own process with journaling at this point so yes those are some options for you to start out especially if you're not someone who journals very often. Other options I do want to mention for journaling is if you're sim simply someone that doesn't like writing things down, you can type things out, Google document and just continue to add to it. You can also leave yourself a voice note. I've done that quite a few times when I'm just not there. I'm not, I don't feel like writing, um, which is very rare. And then you can also do like video journals for yourself. I like that I've created a YouTube channel because I can go back and, and look at where my mindset was at a year ago, uh, a few years ago. So I like video content for that as well. And I record stuff for myself personally that isn't for the world. So there's that too. Okay, and then the final section, which maybe some of you might have been waiting for this whole time, like, girl, get to it, is the books that help me with planning. So the first one I want to start with, in terms of actual planning planning, the first planner that really worked for me and I stuck with for almost three years is the Happy Planner. This looks scarce because I have the... It has these discs that you can detach the pages from, and so for two, three years that I used the Happy Planner, I would just refill the pages as opposed to getting a whole new planner with the disc and then every quarter i would take out the months that i've already used so that i would be 
be, I have enough space to add more throughout. And I think the last year that I used it, I just obviously didn't refill them. So it's just really great at like breaking things down for you visually. I like the way that it was set up in terms of block scheduling. I like that it was like, there's options for the way that you plan. So when I got into was the, uh, the power sheets, I got this in 2020. It is a goal planner and it just helps you with like breaking your goals down and to like quarterly and your big goals yearly goals i didn't find this to be useful for me because it was just too many pages and too many like activities you have to go through so this wasn't helpful for me if you are someone who likes those activities and like you know you like having your planning the things that you're planning in different sections then this is a great book for you the happy planner is great because you can have because of the disc you can have a big one and put different types of sheets in all that to say now where i'm at with my planning is i created my own planner so i've mentioned before and i've shared in my weekly planning routine video which i'll link below as well or up here i created a 30-day self-care journal and planner one because i like i said i tried a lot of journal and planning products and some of them worked for me some of them didn't some of them worked for me for a while and then they stopped working for me so i wanted to create something that was especially for people who are new to planning maybe and might be like oh these things are too much for me i just wanted to create something that was like low maintenance and like low cost so to speak but also design it in a way where everything is in one space and I don't have to think about a bunch of stuff. I just want to think about the next 30 days in terms of like really focus and hone in on what are my goals for the next 30 days. And then because I have already have a system in place for how I plan my week and my month, I knew that if I did it for 30 days, it works out for me. And I had... I made sure to include in the design all of the things that were missing from my happy planner experience. So this is a digital planner, but I printed out I as I wanted to because I was offering it as a product to the rest of the world to help other people out. I tried it out for myself to see what worked best for me so then I can give you guys a full breakdown of this is if this is the type of person you are then this would work best for you. So there's a digital version uh, is all I sell at the moment, but I also printed out the full 30 day journal and this is how thick it is. By the way, if you're curious, I printed it out and I found that this is best for me. So if you are someone who is a visual learner who likes to write things down, then you definitely want to be able to print it out. Before I was printing it out, each of the sheets out and then I was putting it in a binder in itself. But then I found that some days I wasn't printing out the sheets and so I decided to print the whole thing out, bind it up, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the journal because I already have a video for that, but I think someone just asked me earlier today to see the inside of it, so I think I'm gonna do an IG Live to um, go more in depth about what each of the pages look like, even though I already have a YouTube video, like I said, showing you some of the pages, but I'll do that for y'all because I love y'all and I really want y'all to find a planning solution that works for you. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, you definitely should because I'm going to be going live. Actually, by the time you see this video, I've already gone live, but still you should follow me on Instagram so that you can catch the replay for that and decide if this is, if this is the type of journal slash planner for you and see how that supports you. So that is all I have for you all today. I hope that this supported you and helped you with deciding what types of books you should be looking at depending on where you're at in terms of your self-development journey, whether you need to work more on your mindset or you need ideas for books around your creativity. Mm.